This is exercise number 23 on page 96 of your Cardiac Dysrhythmia Interpretation Workbook. And um, so let's start with the heart rate here, which is approximately 84. That's uh, 300, 150, 175, 80, 84 ish, somewhere around there. That's probably pretty accurate. P waves are definitely present and consistent in morphology, and they're regular, and the PR interval is about 0.16 second. And you notice that the PR interval is consistent throughout. Now we have a YQRS, which is uh, most definitely wide, 0.16 second. And, um, you know, just for academic purposes. Um, the QRS begins about here, roughly, and ends about here. Now, what's all this stuff here from here on end? Well, it's probably ventricular repolarization. Uh, but whether you measure from here to here or from here to over here, we have a YQRS without, without a doubt. But somewhere in here has to be ventricular repolarization of the T wave. So this is probably the T wave here and that's probably the end of the QRS there. So it's at least 0.16 second wide. And um, the ratio here is uh, consistently one P wave to one QRS, and the rhythm is regular. So if you have uh, a normal heart rate, and you've got uh, P waves, and the ratio is consistent P waves per QRS, even though you have a Y QRS, then the interpretation is a sinus rhythm with a heart rate of 84 with aberrant conduction. So the QRS is wide, yes, absolutely. Why is it wide? Probably because of a bundle branch block. So, um, you know, if you were to look at a 12 lead ECG, here's the SA node, AV node, bundle of his bundle branches, there's probably either a block in the right bundle branch or a block in the left bundle branch. So right bundle branch block or left bundle branch block. And that's what gives us that wide, bizarre QRS complex. And uh, so we have a sinus rhythm with aberrant conduction. And quite frankly, that's pretty common in the elderly population.